Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna make this intro very, very quick because this video just ended up getting so long. But what I'm working on in this video is building this box. Yeah, just a box. <laughs> Inside this box is the battery pack from my original T-Rex. I had it up for sale for a long time. Nothing ever happened with it, never sold. And I hadn't been using it because I have the T-Rex camper that I also use. But right now I don't even have an EV, so I wasn't really using either one of them. And I wanted to use it as home energy storage. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I built this box, the whole process, pretty much everything. I've had a lot of comments in the past saying that all my videos are just me talking and I don't show myself actually doing any work. So in this video, I show a lot of my work. Don't get mad. You asked for it. And as usual, I included all of the failures as well. <laughs> Enjoy the video, guys. Just in case you ever wanted to see the underside of a Toyota RAV4 EV battery, here is the junction box. Normally there's a fuse connected from here to here and the ground wire, this is for the charging and the accessories inside the car. Uh, and normally there's a fuse right here. I took it out. I think it's a 150 amp fuse. And so yeah, so that's normally where it is, but I don't need the fuse in here. I'm going to have fuses later. And if for some reason this fuse ever blew, it would be impossible to get to once it was inside this box that I'm building. So I just jumpered over it. I tested it. I do get power here and here. Obviously not right now. I wouldn't be that stupid, but yeah, this is what it looks like. And then now on this side, are the cables that go to the motor. There's positive and negative. It's actually written right on there, so you can't mess that up. But yeah, that's what's uh, inside here. This is for the, what are the, HIVL uh, system. It doesn't matter. It's bypassed in my system, the way I access the contactors, but I jumped it over just in case. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. Here's the cover. I'm gonna put the cover back on and put everything back together. Wow, just crazy hot. 93 and humid right now, and I'm out here painting in the sun. Full sun, no shade, and I am painting black paint. Uh, I'm gonna go inside, cool down for a little bit with my whole house off the grid air conditioning system. Let this dry, and then I'll flip it over, paint the top sides, and I'm gonna have to go out and get some insulation next. But it's kind of hard because the CRV doesn't have a trailer hitch. And the RAV4 is the only one that I have that does at the moment. So I have to wait till my wife gets home, use probably this aluminum trailer once I get the battery off of it to go get some uh, four by eight foot sheets of rigid insulation. So that's the plan, gonna go cool down. It is crazy hot. That's it for day one. I didn't get nearly as much done as I wanted to. I guess you never really do, do you, right? But uh, I got the box. The underside is painted. I'll probably have to paint it again now that I put it on stone, but I just wanted to get the insides and all the corners and everything, just in case any water ends up getting in there and sitting in the corner or something. Because the plan is to lean this up against the side of my house at an angle. But I think tomorrow I'll get the tractor, get the loader connected, and I will work on getting this uh, battery off the trailer. It's all unbolted. It's all ready to go. I just got to Get it off. <laughs> but yeah, I'll leave that until tomorrow. And it's just that easy to move a T-Rex. They're usually quite lightweight, even though the battery is about 840 pounds. The trailer is only a couple hundred pounds. So there's not a lot of drag due to weight uh, with these things. But the battery's unbolted and I gotta see if I can maybe get this battery off this one. Okay, here we go. I don't have any ballast on the back. So I don't know if this is gonna work. Uh, the tractor could tip. I do have a back blade that I can put on the back of the tractor to give it a little balance. But we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't end badly.
Well, my 25 horsepower John Deere 2 Series doesn't have the strength to lift this battery up any higher than that. Oh, it looks like my rear tires are off the ground a bit too. And the front tires look a little low. Damn, uh, I'll have to think about this. And uh, so to be continued. <laughs> okay, attempt number two. I inflated the front tires. I had to Google it and see what they should be at for heavy loads. So they were way low. I bumped those up to 40 PSI and I added my back blade for some counterbalancing. And we'll see how it goes this time. All right, sun's out, <laughs> it's getting brighter, but so far I've completely failed. <laughs> Nothing has worked to get this thing up. If the tractor had just a little bit more horsepower, then it would be fine. But unfortunately, I guess this tractor isn't gonna cut it. Um, but I discovered something else. If I lift up on the front side of this battery pack, it does have a lot of play. So I just had to go to my wife's work, get the RAV4 because the RAV4 has all my straps and, and the only car right now that has a trailer hitch. And I'm gonna take straps that go from the front all the way back to the ropes, which is the bar that's up there. It's a restraint safety system and tractors. I th they call them ROPs or ropes or something like that. So yeah, I'm gonna have that go up there and I think I can lift up enough off the front so I can pull the trailer out. Because I need to get the trailer out so I can go get the rest of the supplies that I need to finish this box. So we'll see how it goes. So it is gonna settle when the tractor turns off, the hydraulics will just settle down. Um, I'm worried about getting it back up once it settles because before the trailer was kind of supporting it and I need to have a few inches so I can get in there and, and put this in. So I'm gonna go grab some pieces of wood and put them under here to support it just so when it does settle. And then I'm gonna rush out and I'm gonna go pick up some foam cause I'm gonna put foam here in the bottom before I can put the trailer in. So that's the plan. Yeah, I could hear it settling and creaking down as I was underneath it. Might have to think about upgrading my tractor one of these days. So if anybody wants to buy a like new tractor, let me know. <laughs> but so this is all set. I'm gonna go down to Home Depot and buy some supplies. My wife is home. She's taking care of Caleb and I could do a little more playing. I'm gonna see what I can get done before it gets too dark. install 
some anchors, some eye loops, just so I could hopefully slide this thing around and move it with the tractor. I guess it's time to try to drop it in. We'll see. <laughs> It's in there and it looks pretty uh, pretty straight too. I'm gonna tweak it a little bit. Okay, here's how it looks. I left a bit of a gap on this right side so I could have some electronics over there, uh, the coolant pump and stuff like that. I added these just so it would give a little more support to the square box as I try to drag it around later. All right, so the other thing is that I think, yeah, that looks like it's gonna be pretty tall, but I do have some spacers I'm gonna put here and the lid is gonna be a little bit higher. So hopefully that's not gonna be a problem. I can take that cover off if it is a problem, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. My plan now is to try to drill straight through here and i have like six or seven inch bolts then i'm going to anchor the battery to the actual floor of the box so that's the plan well unfortunately these bolts aren't going to work these are the same bolts that i had the battery pack connected to the trailer with and i was hoping they're going to be long enough but unfortunately they're just not these are six inches and it looks like i measured i need about eight inches which is they're probably not going to be cheap. <laughs> I'm probably looking at 50 bucks in bolts right there, unfortunately. But uh, rather than quitting, because it's getting kind of late, 
not really enough time to go to the store right now. I'll at least start working on the frame for the cover and uh, get these pieces of wood cut and get those ready. All right, I guess that's it for the night. I am still hot and sweaty, as you can probably tell. It is just so, so humid because it rained here today. I've got to get some more plywood for the top that's going to go on here. We we'll have to go out and get some bolts. And with any luck, maybe I'll get this done tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. But I guess that is it for today. Hey, guys. So today is day three, I think, and I'm still working on this battery box. It's getting there but we've actually been getting quite a bit of rain, so I haven't been able to get quite as much done. Like usual, I just try to work through and get stuff done rather than busting the camera out and filming. But you can see my coolant system. I'm actually just gonna use a recirculating pump. You can see the coolant tanks, uh, the pump. I don't think I'm gonna need any cooling or heating with how well I hope this is gonna be insulated. I'm hoping I don't have to add heat. The Tesla battery fluid heater that I use got to be such a huge draw on the system in the winter. It was really sucking up a ton of our power. So I'm hoping to avoid that. I do have a tiny space heater that operates on 120. So I might add that if I have to add some kind of heating, but I'm really hoping that I won't have to. Because again, this is going to be in parallel with my other battery and at max, it'll probably see 20 amps. So it's really not going to get worked hard at all. And here you can see some other videos of me just walking around, getting it all ready to be used. And now here behind me, you can see that the lid is on. I do have that little bump that's in there and that's just to make room for that uh, weird little tunnel where the BMS is on top of the battery pack. And also I thought it'd be good to have a little bit extra room in case I wanted to get in there and do some tinkering, change things up, maybe add a heater or something. I also thought it was a good idea just to have a simple access panel, which that small square there is an access panel. Rather than taking off the whole cover, I can take off that little cover and access all my electronics and stuff. And the next big job that I hope isn't impossible is to move this behemoth. This thing is heavy. And as you saw before, my tractor had a hard time just lifting up the battery. This time I'm hoping just to like slide it and move it and just use the bucket and kind of drag it and then I'll repaint it once it gets into place. But that'll be, I think, Monday or Tuesday that I'll get it into place. One good thing though about this behemoth of a box is that it's very well packaged in case anybody ever wants to buy it off of me. I could just get a really big crate, get it onto the crate and ship it off freight. So a heavy duty box like this kind of does have a double purpose. I guess that's it for now. I'll pick up again in a few days. Well, I've been at this for a few hours. The goal was to get this thing vertical, but unfortunately that was just not in the cards. That tractor just does not have enough power to lift this thing up. The battery is supposed to be around 840 pounds. And then the box I built, that thing is solid. It's got to be a couple hundred pounds. So I'm guessing it's around a thousand pounds. And this tractor is only rated to lift about 840 pounds. So this is as high as I could get it. I'll spin the camera around now and show you guys uh, my situation. <laughs> so here we are. I got my little access door off. I'm gonna start doing some wiring and connection, but I'm gonna to have to, first off, change my coolant reservoir, which sucks, because it was like the first thing I did. Uh, so I'll have to undo that and just tweak it a little bit, because I anticipated getting this thing vertical, 
and the way it is right now with this angle, everything is just going to leak right out. So I'm going to have to get a new hose there, maybe a new hose there, and maybe mount this to the side. I don't know. I'm going to have to figure that out. Yeah, so you probably can hear some whistling. Uh, we are connected to the grid right now. Kind of show you what's going on with my inverter. I'm getting 5.7 kilowatts. Oh, now 4.7. Oh, there's a cloud. Pesky clouds. <laughs> I'm getting that from the solar panels. And then into the battery pack, you can see the number there, 5.4. And it's at 358 volts. I have to get that up to match the voltage of the T-Rex version 1 pack, the RAV4 pack, which is 374 volts. So I have power from the grid coming in some of it's feeding the load and the rest is going through and into the battery we had been feeding the grid all day which is pretty awesome but right now we're pretty much just taking it all right back and there's losses i'm sure in feeding and, and bringing back so i'm still not coming out ahead at all i mean none of this <laughs> i'm ever going to come out ahead probably but uh yeah today i'll be lucky if it was even anyways yeah so that's charging the Tesla camper, the T-Rex camper. And once I get those to a close voltage, I can connect these two in parallel, but I still have a lot of work to do on this. I don't know if I'll get it done tonight, but there's your update for day four, I think it is. Okay, and here is the final product. I have a couple switches right down there. The one on the left is the contactor kill, so I could turn that on and off. The second switch on the right is the coolant pump. And like I said in the video, I don't have a heater or air chiller or anything. It's just a coolant pump to circulate the fluid so that all the modules remain at constant temperature. This panel right here is easily removable. If I ever need to service it or get in there, you can see my on off switch right there. This isn't all that professional or anything. This is 12 volts coming from my inverter here to power everything in there. The 12 volts is coming from a buck converter I have in here because this inverter actually includes, I think 24 volts. Yeah, right there, 24 volts. So then I have it going to a buck converter right here to step it down to 12 volts. And then on the side here is a kill switch that will kill power to this. So if anything got scary or out of control or anything, uh, I have multiple ways to kill it. I could turn this off. This is the main DC power going into the inverter where both this T-Rex and the T-Rex camper combine. So they combine right here. I can flip that off if, if I wanted to. I can turn that switch over there off. I could turn the contactors off. So I don't anticipate there being problems. Knock on wood, I've been pretty good and safe with everything. But just in case, I have multiple shutoffs in place. Fuses as well. There's actually another fuse in there. There's two fuses in there. And then over here, I have my traditional car loop. I just have the cover off because I had reset it. And that's how I monitor all my data from this pack and the T-Rex camper pack. So I can monitor both and see what's going on, make sure the voltages are the same and everything's going smoothly. I've had the battery box covered with this really big tarp to reflect the sun's rays. It's just so temperature doesn't get crazy or anything because obviously it is black. I built this thing to absorb heat energy from the sun in the winter because that's the biggest loss that we have here. It's just heating these batteries. It just consumes so much power. We've had some extremely hot days this year, 95, 90, somewhere in there, almost at a daily basis. And I've had zero problems with this. So I'm sure this tarp is really helping to repel some of those sun's rays. And then in the winter time, of course, I'll leave the tarp off and just let it absorb that heat energy. And I didn't mention this in the other video, but I've mentioned this in plenty of other videos. In both of these battery packs, I am utilizing the onboard Tesla BMS. So if anybody's worried about that, I am definitely still using a BMS. I would never mess around with any kind of batteries or cells without using a BMS. I know a lot of other YouTubers do, but I've also heard of people's houses burning down because of that. So always be safe. If you ever do something like this, definitely hands down use a BMS. Don't be stupid. And lastly, I would sell this. So if somebody does want a battery for home energy storage, uh, this is about 41 kilowatt hours. And then I have about 77 in this Tesla 85 kilowatt hour battery pack. So I have plenty of storage. I really don't need both, 
So if anybody does want to buy that, you can let me know. It's already packaged up, ready to be shipped out. It's got the high voltage wires that come right out of here and you can plug them into your high voltage inverter, uh, whatever you got. But yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.